What the flying fungulation is that? Let's go investigate. Gary Gregg, Palm Tree Reporting, investigative reporter. Uh, True Plant Stories, YouTube. Reporting on what appears to be a Bismarckia nobilis. Why is it so noble? <laughs> I don't need to tell you that. It's obvious why it's so noble. Look at this thing. This is crazy. I'm gonna bring a few of these up to my nursery, but it's just the most craziest. The problem is I almost need to like put the phone back. I'm gonna do that. Put the phone back somewhere. And you can see like how big this tree really is. I'm gonna make a little pile of sand just for you. Right here on my knees. Getting down on my knees for you guys. I think right here is a good spot. Okay, here is a poor man's tripod right there. And there's the tree. You can't really tell how big it is unless I go over there and stand next to it. Okay, is it gonna stay? I'm gonna ruin my phone. Ruin my phone for you guys. Uh uh uh. uh. Okay, well, no. there, like that. All right, here I go. Can you see how big this tree is? <laughs> it's absolutely huge. So, these trees are native to Madagascar and they have the most iridescent color. Too bad it's not a sunny day. The color would really stand out more, but the color goes all the way through the petioles, through the trunk, through the leaf bases, everything. It's just an amazing plant. And down here in the desert of California, these palms love it here. Um, however, they will also grow in the Bay Area. I have one in my house in Lafayette. It's not growing very fast, but it still looks good. It's not nearly as big as this one because I planted it when it was really little, but uh, it still is a fantastic plant. So there you go. Um, Let's see here. So what else do you need to know about this plant? Um, it loves heat. So the hotter you are, here's another one over here. We can see what's gonna happen with the base of the trunk. <sighs> Gotta get sand off my camera. Uh, so check it out. So it makes these ginormous blue fronds, bluer than the bluest blue palms. It's just incredible. And one of my favorite parts is like right in here, right in there. Look at that color. I need the sun to come out. You gotta trust me on the color. But look what happens eventually. You get this nice clean trunk on the bottom, nice hard trunk. These do get big. You gotta have a lot of room for these trees in your yard. And, uh, now, like I said, it loves heat. There's a guy that was really successful in the Central Valley growing one of these things, and everyone was really surprised. They just assumed it was too tropical for the Bay Area, but he proved everybody wrong. And that's when people realized that, you know, it's the heat that's so important for this plant. And I'm in Lafayette. I'm not the hottest spot. I'm not the coldest spot in the Bay Area. Uh, and it does all right. Uh, but uh, if you get out in really hot spots, it's gonna do a lot better. I'm gonna plant one of these things at my ranch where it's ridiculously hot in winters, which is north of Vacaville. I'm gonna have an Airbnb up there for, uh, for you guys pretty soon. So you can go up there and luxuriate with all of my beautiful plants. Uh, you'll see one of these up there. I, I have a feeling it's going to do just amazing up there. I have a mango doing really well up there that just wouldn't perform, you know, in Lafayette that way, even though it's only 50 miles apart, not even 50 miles as a crow flies. It's probably like 40 miles as a crow flies or less, but a huge difference in climate. So, uh, it gets to pretty large proportion. You're going to have a tree that's going to be about 18 feet across and it does grow tall. There's some in the, uh, out in front of the conservatory in San Diego. I should go down there and do a whole video down there. I really need to do that. That's a really cool place. San Diego is such a tropical climate. And by the way, I have an Airbnb in San Diego too. <laughs> the best two places to go. Same thing. It's going to have all like my crazy plants and you can chill and relax. And I'll have a whole list of the best beaches you can go to and surf. And you can even use my, my beater surfboards. You can't use my good ones, but I'll let you use the beaters. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, San Diego is so tropical that uh, these, these, the, uh, usually there's like greenhouses in cities where all these uh, beautiful tropical plants are uh, for the conservatory, like San Francisco. 
But in San Diego, all they need is a little bit of a wood lath house, basically just an open air with a little bit of wood shading. And that's all they need to grow all the tropical plants in San Diego. It's so cool. It's, uh, it's the West Coast's most tropical city. Anyway, um, in Balboa Park, they have these uh, big ones right in front of that conservatory. And they're huge. And they've been there for 15, 20 years. So it's really showing that you can grow this plant in California really well. And really just about as well as Florida. There's not many plants in Florida that look any better than this. This is like spectacular. And you can see where this is growing, you know, with tumbleweed. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty rough conditions. I'm out here in the desert. It gets so hot that some plants get bleached. Like, look at this Mediterranean fan palm. It's just beaten by how hot. It gets like 120 degrees out here. I mean, look at this. So, Mediterranean fan palm, that's a tough plant. Yet, the Bismarckia, no problem. Look, it has perfect foliage all the way down. So that is an indicator of this, this uh, tumbleweed is extremely, <laughs> this stuff's terrible. I was about to walk through it for you guys, but I'm not going to because I've learned my lesson. But look, even the oldest fronds on this tree are hardly tip burned out here. And you know, this is a pretty abusive uh, growing environment, but this is just, this is, kind of, this is like one of the most spectacular palms there is. So, uh, Really looking forward to seeing one of these things like really in the Bay Area proper get really big like San Jose where there's more heat, Fremont, uh, any of those places. One thing you gotta watch on this tree is when you transplant it, they like to root in the ground and they shock during transplants. So you have to be very careful of that. But I'm gonna buy a few. I'm not gonna buy this one. I can't afford this one. Uh, but if you want this tree, I can get this tree for you. But you gotta pay me first. <laughs> so I don't have to front all the money to get this thing. But look at that. It's incredible. If you live in Danville, so they're cold hardy. It, it freezes out here pretty substantially. And so this proves that this tree can handle the frost. It just doesn't like foggy, cool, persistently cold weather. So um, what does that mean? If you're in a place like that and you have to have one of these trees, you have to plant it in front of a hot wall where there's reflected light. Or if you have a swimming pool, oftentimes the swimming pool, if it's on the south side where the plant's planted, the swimming, it'll get the sunlight in the winter on the plant, but it'll also get reflected sunlight off the pool into its face and it'll create a really nice microclimate. Uh, so that's another way to get a microclimate. And if you have a wall, like a building behind the tree, so you have the building facing south, put the tree in, big patio sends up a bunch of heat because it heats up during the day and releases heat at night. There's a swimming pool, it does the same thing, but in addition to doing that, the swimming pool will, will reflect light, like a reflector building up even more light and more heat into the plant and gets all that heat gets captured in front of a south face building. And next thing you know, you're growing mangoes and everything else and everyone's like, how are you doing this? And I'm like, well, it's really simple. It's called thermal dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> I start these videos and then like, if you're like, hey, I'm gonna give Gary a call. I think right now is a great time. And you call me up and I'm making a video, guess what happens? Bam, it stops. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah! I was the reason that video stopped prematurely. Anyway, and then I ran out of battery. But look, here's another Bismarckia. Yeah. Look how cute they are when they're little. So pretty. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get a couple for the San Diego place, get one for the winner's place. I'm not sure about Richmond, I kind of think. Well, we actually have one in Richmond but I've sort of abused it. I need to like treat it better, but it survived. It doesn't really get any water. It's in the demo, old demo garden out in the front. And uh, anyway, the one up there is kind of pink, which is cool. Sometimes these things will be pink, but Bismarckia noblis, I'm going to show you what a little guy looks like. This one's probably only like four feet tall. You put it in a spot that it'll just be striking and uh, then let it get big, give it some room. And you can see here, we have an avocado tree off in the distance behind it. And anytime you have used a plant that's silver like this, you want to have some dark backdrop, either shadow or dark green, and then you get a really good contrast. We'll take a look at what this looks like in front of a bunch of dark green pygmy palms from the angle. Same thing, see that? The fronds don't show themselves off as well on this side. 
And there's also a, a bigger plant where I am here. I'm gonna go down and check that thing out and show that to you as well for the video so you can see what a medium-sized plant will look like. But here's a baby. You can buy yourself a baby. We're gonna have some plants coming into the nursery real soon. And uh, depending upon how they do, we might start selling more. I think Fremont, San Jose, uh, Concord, uh, Danville, Santa Rosa, places that get hot are gonna be the best. Clayton, um, where else? You know, kind of away from the bay, but they can handle the cold. They just need some heat. And here we go again. Look at this, this is really well trimmed. And you guessed it, another incarnation of the Bismarckia nobilis. Let's take a look at this. This is just, you gotta admit, I don't care who you are. Some people don't like palms, I don't know why. I typically don't like those people that don't like palms. It's like, you know, people who like kittens and then people say, oh, I hate kittens. And they just think like, oh, those people that hate kittens, they must be really bad people. How can you not like this palm thing? Look at this. So cool. Anyway, all the patterns and the shapes and the symmetry and the colors. I'm going to get pricked to death trying to do this. Look, look what I'm going through. This is prickly. But I need to be right here to get this, this uh, magic that's happening right here. Look at the magic. First of all, there's the, the radial pattern. It's just so amazing. Take a good look at that. But more important, look closely at the little water droplets on the fronds that are illuminating because of the light angle right now and the shimmer and the uh, iridescence of the reflective quality of the foliage itself. Isn't that cool? Anyway, so yeah, so I promise you another um, beautiful shot of a Bismarckia, and here it is. I want you to especially pay attention to this coloration right here. A lot of times on plants, this stuff rubs off. See that? White. You don't really want to rub it off because then, you know, you won't have the color. But, uh, yeah, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Look at this. So what could I use that for? Maybe sunscreen. Like put it on my face, on my nose before I go to the beach. That's it, man. I mean, maybe maybe in the future to be more eco-conscious because all of this uh, sunscreen, uh, can you see me? All this sunscreen is petroleum-based when really all you need to do is plant Bismarckia, right? At the beach parking lot, every beach parking lot should have Bismarckia. And then that way, you go out and put your zinc oxide uh, substitute. You don't have to put any sunscreen on, just lube up with this stuff. And then um, it'll be the most eco-friendly solution for sunscreen the world has ever known. So anyway, but look at that beautiful color. Uh, that's a Bismarckia right there. Bismarckia noblest. I think it's gonna conclude my Bismarckia video. I don't know what else to say. So here's a beautiful situation where you have all these dark green cycads that surround this beautiful blue silver Bismarckia. And of course, we don't, still don't have any sun, so I can't really get a good read on it. But let me stand back far enough, get pricked some more by some other stuff, and see if I can get more or less the whole plant with the contrast of the greenery around it. I'm going to walk this way a little bit. And for honorable mention, <laughs> check this big coning cycad out. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness, that doesn't look real. Does that look real to you? I wanna see if my buddy will let me cut that off because he doesn't need that. And I'll take it and put it in my uh, collection of cones from Psychats that I have at the San Diego place. Uh, but there you go. Bismarckia noblis from Madagascar. I think you know enough about this plant now that I don't need to talk any longer. And that'll do it.